Um, this is something that has um, been one of the great accomplishments, uh, not just of the Democratic Party, uh, but of the United States. Uh, Medicare has been a success. It has been medically a success. It has been socially a success. And uh, this legislation before us uh, will only strengthen Medicare. And to underscore a point that you were making, Ms. Schakowsky, uh, by getting better coordination among doctors, by having more primary care doctors, by covering preventive care, by making sure that, that uh, beneficiaries have access to medicine, we not only get efficiencies, but each patient gets better care. We begin to shift more toward attention to the outcome, the health of the patient. Uh, having uh, extra procedures or having to go to a specialist when you don't need to go to a specialist, but only because you don't have a primary care physician available, is not only costly, but it is not healthful. It does not produce the best outcome. And it leaves the patient frustrated and getting the runaround. So people ask me, well, in this health care bill, how can you claim to cut costs and not cut our benefits? How can you claim to cut costs and, and not give us worse care? Well, in fact, that's the point exactly. By having primary care physicians, by paying for the medical education of those physicians, to have more of them available, to have better coordinated care among doctors, the patients will get better care. So it's not just a matter of efficiency, but it is that also. And to, to continue on your point, the debate that we're having right now strongly echoes the debate of the 1960s over Medicare. Quote, inefficient and costly government, end quote. Quote, putting the government between the doctor and the patient, end quote. Quote, socialized medicine, end quote. Yes, we've heard all of those phrases this year, this week, in fact, tonight, here, previously, from the other side of the aisle. Those are quotes from the 1960s. Now, few people today would call for a repeal of Medicare, given its success for seniors. Yet it was very controversial back then. The same arguments were made against health care reform then as are being made now. Some leaders, from Ronald Reagan to Bob Dole to Gerald Ford, fought the program, voted against its creation. Since then, some opponents of Medicare have tried to cut or cut Medicare. The speaker of the, former Speaker of the House, uh, Gingrich, spoke of cutting back Medicare so that it could, quote, wither on the vine. Does anybody really think that Democrats, who are so proud of the accomplishments of Medicare, would for a moment consider cutting back on Medicare? Does anybody reasonably think that? This is a successful program that has taken us from 1965 when 44 percent of seniors were uninsured. They had no place to go except maybe the emergency room if they got really sick. It's taken us to a point where barely 1% of seniors today have no coverage. Seniors had limited choices back then. They could deplete their savings or seek assistance from their children or look for charity care or, as was so often the case, forego medical care entirely. Within 11 months after President Johnson signed Medicare into law, almost 20 million Americans had, enro had enrolled in the program, and it has virtually eliminated uninsurance among older Americans. Today, fewer, about 1% of those 65 and older, lack health care coverage. 
So ask any of the 45 million beneficiaries if they would trade their Medicare. You'll have a hard time finding any.